Now for me, I know that at age 30, when I retired from the game, uh, due to my neck injuries, uh, the biggest thing that I had to change in order to come back and play was my nutrition. And now for the last 21 years, I've lived a certain way and, and eaten a certain way. And I know that it gave me almost 13 more years in the National Hockey League. Taken from someone who played in the NHL, won a Stanley Cup, and now works with some of the biggest names in the game. Nutrition is the key to higher hockey performance. Based on working with hundreds of junior, college, and pro hockey players, and doing detailed analysis of their eating habits, I can confidently say hockey players don't know anything about performance nutrition. The only athletes I have seen who had their nutrition habits in check were taught by a top strength coach or sports nutritionist. Nobody, and I really mean nobody, learns this stuff on their own. In all my years of training athletes, I've never seen it, which is sad. Like Gary Roberts says, nutrition can have a huge impact on your game at any level from the beer leagues to the NHL. So with that in mind, let's talk about the seven biggest hockey nutrition mistakes you're making that hold your muscular development, your level of leanness, and your athletic performance back. First mistake, not counting calories. Yes, some people can get away with it, they look and feel great without ever measuring their food intake. But if you're watching this video, you're not one of those people. The most basic thing hockey athletes must learn is how the amount of calories you consume impacts your body weight and body composition. A skinny guy who wants to gain 10 pounds of lean mass must eat enough food to create a calorie surplus. And an athlete who needs to drop 10 pounds of body fat can only do so in a calorie deficit. This is basic thermodynamics. Nobody can escape. But unless you're counting calories, how do you know you're in a surplus to gain weight or in a deficit to shed fat? You won't. You're just guessing and when it comes to getting real results, guessing gets you nowhere. You have to be objective and methodical about what and how much food goes into your mouth. Second mistake, eating too little protein. Just the other week, I started working with a European hockey pro on fixing his nutrition so he can get lean, something he admitted he has been struggling with for years, ever since his junior national team days a decade ago. Imagine that. A guy who gets paid to play the sport but who has never been taught how to eat for sports performance. Unbelievable. The first thing I look at after total calories is macronutrient intake. Proteins, carbs, and fats. This athlete was eating around 120 to 140 grams of protein per day. The problem? Too low. He weighs around 100 kilos, 220 pounds, so this adds up to around 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Simply not enough. As you can find out in my previous video on hockey nutrition for muscle growth, the card will show up here. Click that to watch it. Protein should be around 1 gram per pound of body weight. And I'm seeing this across the board, even though hockey players train hard and eat meat, many still have difficulty getting enough protein in to fuel muscle building and recovery. Next mistake, eating too many carbohydrates. Your average hockey player has never met a carb he didn't like. Bread, pasta, muesli, pastries, candy, chocolate bars, all are more or less processed carbs and all find their way into a hockey player's mouth. Eating too many processed carbs in a calorie surplus just packs on more body fat. This is why a good number of hockey pros, despite the large amounts of physical activity they do, end up fat or skinny fat. On the flip side, healthy carbs such as vegetables, fruits, berries are nowhere to be seen in a hockey diet. This is our big mistake number four. The lack of healthy carbs means your diet is short in important vitamins and minerals. It will negatively affect how you feel and how much energy you have on the ice and in your daily life. Mistake number five, not eating enough fat. Fat consumption is crucial for proper body function, ranging from testosterone production to brain health, among many other things, by consciously or subconsciously limiting dietary fat intake, you're taking away from your physical and mental performance. For the millionth time, eating fat doesn't make you fat. There's no reason to fear quality fats you get from nuts, fish, olives, avocados, eggs. Most hockey players should be eating plenty more of those. Now we come to mistake number six, meal timing. It's not unusual for a hockey athlete to have breakfast at 8 a.m. and have their next meal at 1 in the afternoon. That isn't a big deal if you have nothing going on between breakfast and lunch, 
but typically there's hockey practice or a gym workout somewhere during those hours. You'll want to make sure that the gap between training and eating doesn't get too big. Also, when I talk about meal timing, it's not so much about what the clock says, it's about matching your eating schedule around physical activity. You always want to be well fed going into a practice, a workout or a game. And make sure you get quality food in quickly after it to kickstart the recovery process. For more tips on that, check out my other video on perfect hockey game day meals. Click the card up here. The final seventh mistake is relying on supplements to do the job. I gotta give it to supplement companies. They're very effective at brainwashing people through their marketing and advertising campaigns where they use bodybuilders, fitness models, conveying that you too can look lean and muscular like Mr. Fitness Champion here if you just take this special mixture he probably has never used himself but is more than happy to promote for a few grand and a sponsorship deal. Too many athletes think drinking a whey protein or mass gain a shake every day is magically going to solve their muscle growth problems while they're still making the other six mistakes on this list. Let me make it as clear as possible. There's no supplement in the world that's going to get you jacked without first fixing your lousy nutrition. The reason I rag on supplements so much is I used to fall for that deceptive marketing. And when I learned the truth about what it really takes to get ripped, I understood that 99% of what's out there adds nothing to your results. That's not to say all supplements are useless. There are a handful I put all my clients on. For a list of the specific supplements I recommend to hockey players, watch the video up here. You don't stay strong, stay fit, recover, stay healthy without eating properly. And the players that learn that at a younger age have a better opportunity to be healthier and to become a better athlete with, uh, with their nutrition. Thanks for that last piece of advice, Gary. To help you become a better athlete through nutrition, watch this video about the best breakfast for hockey players. And also check out this one about my top five protein choices for athletes to build your high performance diet around. Thank you for watching. If you want more great training and nutrition tips like this, then smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.